Good afternoon. My name is Renette Edgar, and I'd like to welcome all of you uh, to this presentation this afternoon. Uh, we're very excited to have um, Sergeant uh, Colin Haygai, hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, with us uh, for this Lunch and Learn today. Uh, Sergeant Haygai is with the Regina um, Police Services, and he's here this afternoon to discuss the work, type of work that they do, the training they receive, the characteristics they're looking for in a candidate, uh, career opportunities, salary expectations, and working conditions. Um, a reminder to students that are going to be watching this um, uh, video at a later date, uh, of course, you can find it on our YouTube channel, uh, but on our website, you will find a student survey, uh, and we ask all students to complete the survey uh, when they watch this uh, video. It helps us to uh, plan future events, get a little bit of feedback from you, and to just um, kind of give us some information that we need to report on. So with that, in, in, uh, in conclusion here, I'm going to um, invite Sergeant Haygai to start his presentation. And, um, and if there's any questions, we'll sure answer them for you. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you very much, Renette. Uh, like she said, my name is Colin Haygai. I'm a sergeant with the Regina Police Service. In January of this year, I will have 20 years of service. Uh, started in January of 2001. A little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Calgary. Uh, I grew up um, ski racing as a kid, playing baseball, playing football, kind of generating that uh, and getting a, a real love for being involved in, 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 in a team and, and acting in team dynamics. But uh, in 1998, uh, well, I, I, I went to high school in Calgary and then I went to Mount Royal College in Calgary for two years and got a diploma in criminology. Uh, back then it was just a college, now it's now become a university. Um, but because it wasn't a university at the time, I wanted to continue my education. I was still pretty young and wasn't really prepared to hit the workforce quite yet. But uh, I worked some part-time jobs uh, while I went to school. I worked in the service industry. I worked in uh, security. I worked in loss prevention. Uh, and I did all sorts of other uh, volunteer experiences with um, the Special Olympics, for example, and a whole bunch of other agencies in and around uh, Calgary and also in Regina. When I moved to Regina in 1998, I uh, enrolled at the University of Regina and I uh, subsequently got a degree in both human justice and a Bachelor of Arts in political science. And I applied in uh, the summer of 2000 and I was lucky enough to be hired uh, with the Regina Police Service in uh, January of 2001. Since I've been at the Regina Police Service, I was a patrol member for, for many years. I, the bulk of my experience and my um, time here at the Regina Police Service was in patrol. I enjoyed patrol work. I enjoyed the shift work, but I also did uh, three years as a, as a detective in robbery. And I've also worked in our community centers, which uh, was more of a proactive community-based policing unit for three years. And I went on to become a street su uh, supervisor. And now in January of 2000, I, I took a job here in, uh, in recruiting. Um, in addition to that, we have a lot of other things that we can do while in addition to our regular duties. I was on the special weapons and tactics team for 16 and a half years. And while I was there, I was a, a member of the rappel team. I went on to become a team leader of the rappel team um, and, uh, be, and ended up becoming an alternate team leader in, in what we call the command group of uh, the special weapons and tactics. So uh, I've also been, I'm also a firearms instructor. And I also work with our critical incident stress management team, which looks at uh, trying to minimize the long-term effects of um, trauma and stress in, in our police officers and our uh, civilian staff. And basically what that CISM program does is just try to um, mitigate those effects by we have what's called debriefings at the end of traumatic calls where um, science has shown that if done properly, that the um, those debriefings really help people to express their emotions and what they're feeling, and, and it really helps in uh, the long-term stress. So I, um, yeah, that's about my career. I've, I've been doing it for 20 years, um, and what a lot of people say, and Chief Evan Bray says it very well, is that there is no better job in the world, but this, uh, this job isn't for everybody. So I hope to answer uh, as many questions as you have, but of course, you can um, at any time send me an email or uh, through the uh, RPS website, recruiting website, 
and uh, I hope today just to go over the basic requirements. Uh, what, what can you expect when you're in the recruiting process? What happens when you get hired? And then what happens when you're done your education and your training? Uh, so hopefully my PowerPoint is working properly here, but we'll move it on. Uh, so there's actually two kind of, of uh, ways, or there's two methods um, in looking at what, how you qualify to be a police officer. Uh, at the Regina Police Service, we have two tracks, uh, really, of um, how you can be employed by the Regina Police Service. Currently, there's about 405 sworn police officers. Those are people that take an oath uh, and are governed by uh, the Saskatchewan Police Act, but we also have a civilian contingent of about 200 people that do everything um, that kind of work behind the scenes and, and support us and make our job easier. So we'll go over that in time. But to become, I'm going to focus more on the sworn side, the the how to become a police officer. So there, uh, we are governed by the um, the Saskatchewan Police Act, and in that act, it covers uh, some basic requirements. That being uh, 18 years old, uh, having a grade 12 um, diploma or equivalent GED. Um, prior to replying, you have to have your standard first aid and level CCPR, which you can get from a whole bunch of different agencies in, in town and throughout the province. Uh, you must have a valid class five driver's license and you must have uh, a visual acuity that um, we accept, and that's 2040 uh, vision in both eyes or 2100 and 2060 in one eye. And you must be able to wrap, pass the written physical and medical examinations. Now that's from the province, but in addition to that, the Regina Police Service asks that you be 19 years old. You must be 19 years old to apply in Regina, and that's simply because of uh, Saskatchewan Liquor and Gaming um, rules and that you have to be 19 to enter into a licensed establishment or a casino. Must have no criminal record, but if you do have a criminal record, uh, you can apply for a pardon. And uh, depending on the particular offense in which you're convicted of, it would really depend on how long ago you committed that offense and what your behavior and what uh, you've learned from that as time has gone on. Uh, we also ask that there's no criminal involvement in the previous three years, and that's detected or undetected. And we will get to that with a polygraph test. And that is how we determine whether um, somebody has been um, crime free uh, for the previous three years. And a polygraph test is what's often what you see on television. It's a lie detector test and uh, we have some very highly trained people that are able to analyze your uh, breathing and, and everything like that to determine whether or not you're trying to hide something from us. So some of the recommendations that we make prior to, to applying with us is uh, we have a Citizens Police Academy, which is about a 12 week program. Uh, you go every Wednesday night from seven until nine-ish or so, where you get uh, learn all about all the different sections uh, with the Regina Police Service. We also look at how connected you are with your community. It's really important that um, you know when when I when we interview people, we we listen to. Um, them talk about wanting to be a police officer to make their community a better place. Well, I think it's really, really important that you understand what your community is, the dynamics of it, and the challenges uh, before even applying with us so that you can come and uh, when you're speaking to us and you're applying with us that you know uh, what's going on around you. And of course, uh, when you're applying, being uh, physically fit is extremely important. We want our, our police officers to be able to uh, live a healthy lifestyle and uh, to ensure that um, when the time comes that you need to protect yourself or somebody else, that you, uh, the chances of being injured are a lot less. So we have a list of desired competencies, uh, things that you should be able to see in yourself uh, prior to applying. Uh, things like adaptability and a commitment to learn. As a police officer, you're always learning. The law is changing. Technology is changing, the community is changing. Regina is a very growing community, and uh, we want to ensure that the best way to protect and, and, and serve our community is to understand it and learn of what's going on in your community. Communication, um, the, the vast majority of police interactions are concluded and resolved just with communication. And it's very, very important that coming into this profession that you have the ability to be confident in yourself, be confident in your abilities and be able to speak to people professionally and uh, ensure that those interactions uh, are concluded safely. And the bulk, the vast majority of um, the interactions we have are done through that. Oh, I'm going to go back. Sorry. 
cross-cultural sensitivity, of course, is very, very important with the uh, amount of uh, immigration and um, how Regina is growing. Um, according to the last mayor, Michael Fougere, can, or Regina has one of the largest growing uh, new Canadian populations per capita across the country. So as a reflection of the service that we are, we want to ensure that we are meeting the needs of everybody in uh, Regina and we are see ourselves as a very inclusive agency and we want to reflect that and ensure that people understand um, the best way to, to talk to people and respect traditions and cultures. Uh, initiative, uh, integrity and truth, judgment, professionalism, ethic, being ethical, these are all kind of lumped into kind of the same type of thing that we just want, we want good people. We want good people making good decisions and we want to be able to ensure that if somebody goes, that if a police officer shows up at your door, that they're going to do the best they, they can to make the right decisions under those particular circumstances. Uh, motivation, that's, it's very, very important. Policing is not just about responding to calls. It's about seeking out solutions to crime. And it's about seeking out how we can best proactively help everybody around us. And without any motivation, that's going to be very, very difficult. And last but not least, of course, is teamwork. Uh, we, can't, um, we can't solve crimes and we can't make life better in Regina on our own. We have, to, we have to work well within a team, within the team at Regina Police Service and, and our community partners as well. We have to be able to say that we have limits. We have both structurally, socially, and economically that police officers can't solve every problem in the city. So it's really, really important that we're able to rely on one another, rely on other partners in the community and whether it's uh, social services or health or um, you know, our partners at the jail or, and, um, the deputy sheriff's office, the courthouse, our prosecutors, that we all work well together as a team so that we are one functioning unit. So the steps in the, in the selection process are pretty much the same and they'll go through. It's a long process. It takes about six months to a year to get through it. Uh, the first is the Sigma exam. That's a basic reading comprehension, uh, problem solving type of exam where you're asked to um, answer 74 questions in 35 minutes. Uh, it's, it's a pretty tough exam, but still it's, it's important that we understand that um, we, everyone that's applying has the basic reading and writing skills that you need to articulate yourself properly at, at, in court and in your reports. And um, you can write this as many times as you want. We've had plenty of police officers that have uh, been unsuccessful in this test, but then have gone on to become great um, members of our team. And it's really important that um, not to give up. If, if you're unsuccessful in this first test because it's, uh, it can be challenging. And oftentimes we see people write it the first time and do uh, pretty poorly and then go on to, to succeed. So um, when you do write that test, if you are unsuccessful, you have to wait 60 days before you uh, can write it again. And then if you're unsuccessful a second time, you have to wait six months before you can write it a third time. But you can write it as many times as you want. You just have to keep waiting that six month period before you can write it again. The next step in the selection process is the POPAT. That's the police officer's physical abilities test. It must be completed in four minutes and 45 seconds. And uh, once you go to the Saskatchewan Police College, you have to be able to run it in four minutes and 15 seconds when you leave. Uh, it's a very challenge. It's a challenging test. But uh, if you come in to the recruit into the um, into the process in the best shape of your life, you will not likely have an issue with this. Um, but a lot of people um, overlook um, the weights that you have to do, you have to, on a push-pull machine, you have to be able to push 80 pounds and pull 80 pounds. Um, so it's to be, uh, it's, it's not very, very difficult to pass this test, but it's very difficult to get a good time. Um, the next step in the selection process is, is, pers is the personal disclosure form, or what we call the PDF. This is very, very important because this tests your ethics, your accountability, and your transparency. As a recruiting sergeant, I am real, I'm pretty lenient on some of the uh, past decisions that people make. And sometimes time, uh, it takes time for those decisions to kind of simmer down. But what we understand that people make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. There's police officers riding in patrol cars right now out on, out on a snowy day that have made poor decisions. But what we are looking for is to 
the ability to take account of is, to, is accountability for those poor decisions and to be completely transparent and honest in your lifestyle and the life choices that you've made so that uh, when we know when it come when the time comes when your integrity is tested that we know that you will make the good decisions uh, going forward. Uh, so as once your PDF is completed, you'll be called in to, ask, to do a screening interview. This is a get to know you type of thing. It's a structural uh, interview that's based on uh, it's behavioral questions, experience based questions. Uh, if you're successful in, in, in getting through that interview, uh, you move on to the MMPI. That's the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, which basically looks at kind of it's a 500 and some question uh, in uh, questions exam. It's not an exam. It's more or less just a, uh, a way to examine the way that you think and the way that you behave and then determine whether the, your traits would be uh, similar to the thousands of other police officers who've taken the same test. Uh, after that, you'll be um, subjected to our polygraph exam. It can be anywhere from two to four hours long, where uh, they really go over that personal disclosure form to ensure that you're telling the truth about some of your previous decisions and uh, your integrity. And um, it's a very valid test. Then you'll go into your background investigation where we talk to all your neighbors, your friends, your references, your old employers, your family, uh, and even yourself or your spouse if you're married at the time, those types of things, and even your children if you're married or if you have children at the time. And then from there you go to the selection board and the selection board is chaired by either our, our chief of police or the deputy chief and you're uh, asked a series of questions, behavioral based questions and experience based questions. And then from there uh, you determine whether you'll be hired or not. Uh, after that, you'll be issued an offer of employment. Uh, uh, it's conditioned on a medical exam, which is always kept confidential. And uh, just to determine uh, that you're not going to risk uh, yourself at, at any length um, medically if you're hired. And then from there, you're on probation for one year. The salaries for the Regina Police Service are very, very competitive. We're one of the top three uh, paid um, police agencies in the country. And as you can see, a first class constable, which is five years, uh, you'll be making approximately $106,000 a year, which uh, when you think of it, and for most social services is, uh, is, is quite a bit higher for uh, teachers and, and, and uh, firefighters and, and even some nurses along the way too. So if you're looking at service and, and working in the community and, and working in a service industry, policing offers very, very, competitive uh, salaries. So in addition to the salaries, we have uh, medical and dental benefits, a healthcare spending account, which is supplemental to it. Uh, you get about an extra thousand dollars a year that you can spend on anything you pretty much want to. Um, uh, there's also a maternity and paternity leave for when the time comes to if you choose to have children or uh, if you um, choose to spend more time with an adopted child or something of that matter. We have our own gym. We have uh, two different gyms and a wellness coordinator who uh, will develop fitness plans for you and develop workouts for you. There's also fitness classes at lunchtime and yoga and um, we also have educational incentive programs where the, the service will pay for courses for you to take. Um, when I was hired, I didn't, I was three, I was nine credits short of, of actually finishing my Bachelor of Arts in political science. And I went on and uh, I completed that degree while I was working here. And I also went on and took master's classes as well, which the, uh, the service paid for. We also have a very good life insurance pro, um, a very good life insurance program and um, package, which, um, if, if you were to unfortunately be injured or, or even die in the line of duty, that uh, your family would be very well looked after. Uh, we have a gold standard pension plan, which for a lot of young people, they don't, they overlook this. This is very, very important because uh, for somebody like myself, I can retire at about 51 years old and I will uh, receive a paycheck uh, until the day that I die. And uh, that's very, very important. I, it may not seem important uh, for, for young people, but uh, it, it, it is very, very important because there are many, many uh, agencies out there, certainly in the public sector that are starting to lose this, uh, this benefit. So a pension plan is something that, uh, whether you choose policing or not, if it's one thing uh, for me as an association member, I'm also uh, the communications director or a communications officer for the Regina Police Association, which is our union. Um, but as a union member, it's really, really, really important to understand that the benefit that a pension brings to you. 
Uh, we also have personal development and promotional opportunities as you move up. Uh, I've been a, a sergeant now for just a year, but I was a corporal for 10 years. And there's a lot of real great opportunities that come with that as you move up in rank. And then working in that team atmosphere, Regina Police Service is a, it's actually one of, a, it's actually kind of a large agency um, when you look at things, certainly compared to a lot of American partners that we have, but um, with 400 members, it's, it's great because it's big enough that you can do all sorts of cool things in your career, but yet it still uh, has that family feeling to it. Some of the civilian positions, I'll go over them just very quickly. Things like, in, uh, like IT and administrative assistance and financial services, people that look after our payroll. Uh, human resources, the majority of people that I work with here in human resources as a recruiting officer are civilians and they work after looking after uh, all sorts of different ways of hiring and, and wellness and um, employee and family assistant program. We also have our police information and management. Those are the people that ensure that all the reports that we, we write are accurate and uh, that everything is prepared and ready to go for when um, documents need to go to court. Uh, we also have uh, facilities, as you can see on the picture there, that's my, uh, that's my bro Arjun. He's been working hard to become a police officer, but he works part-time as a casual while he was going to university working in our uh, garage. So he changes the tires on our patrol cars and uh, major accident scenes. He comes out and brings pylons and shuts down the streets for us. And, and uh, again, um, just one more example of you don't necessarily need to be a police officer to, to help out and to be a member of the Regina Police Service. Uh, Comm Center is what is, uh, you can see Jill, smiling Jill up in the corner there. She works, she's one of our 911 dispatchers and, and complaint takers. So when people are in crisis, they call 911, they speak to people like Jill and, and they try to diffuse and get uh, the situation as best they can, get all the information for the police officers that are going out to um, arrive on scene. So if you're interested in civilian recruitment or civilian hiring, everything is basically online through our website. And it's also on social media as well, but it's, it's just, um, the opportunities are there and they pop up uh, frequently from time to time as they create jobs and people retire and then just the best way is just to follow our website and follow our uh, Twitter accounts and that type of thing for uh, information on those. Um, you if you do apply for a uh, civilian position, you will also need to complete that personal disclosure form and go through a polygraph because uh, you'll be dealing with uh, well, most likely you'll be dealing with very sensitive information. So we want to ensure that uh, we can trust the people that uh, we put in those positions not to disclose information that uh, they're not supposed to. So how do you apply? Well, you need your application form, vision test, CPR and first aid, school transcripts, driver's abstract, resume, and proof of citizenship. We, uh, um, if you're a, um, a permanent resident, you are uh, permitted to apply. We just need uh, proof that you are a permanent resident. As of right now, uh, landed immigrants or refugees are not allowed to apply with the Regina Police Service, but um, Canadian citizens, obviously, and uh, permanent residents are allowed to apply. Uh, so in terms of physical fitness, we recommend that you, before even applying, that you be able to run five kilometers in under 30 minutes and that you can run in all sorts of weather. Whether When you go to police college, you'll be asked to run in minus 30 and plus 30 because as a police officer, you can't, uh, we can't, um, we can't pick the weather that we work in and emergencies and trauma happens every day regardless of, of the weather. So it's really, really important that we as a police officer that you're able to uh, work in all sorts of different conditions and be adaptable to those conditions. And then obviously weight training. Uh, and there's very, there's actually specific courses that you can take through the University of Regina that'll help you prepare for that POPAT test. Um, and it's really, and you can seek those out through the U of R. Uh, when it comes to the training, uh, every police officer, every municipal police officer in Saskatchewan goes to the Saskatchewan Police College. That's Regina, Saskatoon, Prince Albert, Moose Jaw, Weyburn, Estevan, and then some of the other ones like Corman Park and um, Looseland, small, small agencies that probably most people have never even heard of, do all their training at the Saskatchewan Police College. And it is a, uh, it's a part of Saskatchewan justice that is centered out of the U of R and it's at arm's length from all the police agencies just to ensure that the, there's that independence and, um, and that the training is not influenced by, by any one agency over the other. Uh, it's a 20 week program. Um, it covers everything from defensive tactics. You can see that um, you can learn the joint manipulation and, and that type of thing and, and get better. Uh, 
Defend yourself in those situations. And then you're also receive all sorts of training in firearms and, and driving and um, verbal judo and criminal law, uh, human behavior, all sorts of different things to help you uh, be better trained. So in once you are hired, your training is, is about a year long because after that, those 20 weeks in police college, you're out with a field recruit training officer for six months. And then once you're done there, you're, you're on your own, but you're still closely monitored by your uh, sergeant, your field sergeant, your field corporal, and also your uh, recruit training officer. So just some other things now that this is over, we'll go over uh, just some of the things, the problems that I see in hiring. Um, where we lose a lot of people is in that, well, the first is the fitness and that people come into that popat thinking, uh, I'll get in, I'll scrape by, and then I'll get in good shape when I go to police college. Well, it's really, really important for me um, when I'm evaluating recruits or I'm uh, evaluating um, candidates is to ensure that when they're coming into that um, application process that they're in the best shape of their life. If they can come in because that shows me dedication, it shows me motivation, and it shows that uh, this is, uh, it's a goal, it's a, and it's a, it's, a, it's a dream for someone to get this job and that they're doing everything they need to do or they want to do before they even uh, start the process. And being physically fit, there's so many other things that go with it. You know, it's nutrition and it's good sleep patterns and it's good organization skills and all the rest of those types of things that will make you become a better police officer, but it'll also uh, make your job easier because when you don't have to worry about uh, other stresses like that, uh, the trauma alone that, that police officers see that most people in emergency services see, whether it's firefighters or paramedics or doctors or nurses, that uh, those stresses can be worked off with good coping mechanisms and fitness is a very good way to do that. Another uh, obstacle or roadblock that I often see uh, in the uh, recruiting process is that uh, personal disclosure form. If you are serious about becoming a police officer and you want to work with the, with, with the Regina Police Service or, or the RCMP or Saskatoon or wherever it is you choose to go, that that decision is made in high school. And that decision uh, carries out from that day that you decide, I want, to, I want to stick to this and I want to be a police officer and I want to help my community. So it's absolutely essential that the, those decisions that you start making as you are uh, a young person that it carries out in through your university career or your trades career, or, or if you decide to work before applying with us, is that um, the decisions uh, that you make don't hold you back. And whether it's impaired driving or excessive drug use or uh, theft or, or frauds or those types of things, um, like I said, I can look, I can overlook some bad decisions, but if it's a pattern of behavior, I can't overlook that. And because we need the most ethical and moral people working for us because we are in uh, a position of trust. So when making that decision to become a police officer, the ethics are the very, very important. Um, some other things, I, that's all I can really think of in terms of obstacles and roadblocks of, um, in the hiring process. Um, I'll maybe turn it over to uh, some of the other folks in here to see if they have any questions or something that I may have missed. Hi, yes, we do have a question actually. There's a couple from uh, that we've had like. So the students that are watching this presentation are, are like you said, are in high school. Uh, so those good decisions need to be made, you know, already. Um, what is the reality of a 19 year old actually um, joining or becoming a part of your team? Or, or are you wanting that life experience first in your candidates? Well, I'll tell you, there, there have been people who have been 19, 20 years old that have been hired. I, I was hired when I was 23. And I mean, that, that's, it's, it's not common, but it can happen. It, it really depends on maturity. Now, I was lucky enough as a young person that I got to travel a lot. And um, because of the, the ski racing, the, the small ski racing career that I had, and I was, I also took jobs as a very young person. So to answer your question directly, being hired at 19 or 20 is very rare, but because ultimately I'd like to see people with a little bit of mud on their tires. I want to see people that have been, uh, that have had the opportunity to face uh, roadblocks and face um, hardships in their life to see how they overcome it. Because being a police officer, like I said, it is the greatest job in the world, in my opinion, but still it can be very, very challenging. And if, people are coming into this application process and they haven't been challenged, 
then it is difficult for them to show that they've gotten over those challenges and still been resilient and adaptable and moved on, um, uh, you know, in learning from those mistakes or learning from those experiences. Um, we get a lot of young hockey players that apply for us, uh, which is great because we want to see all aspects of uh, and diversity with, from the community. But hockey players are are great because, especially the professional athletes that have been able to to, to move around and and play in different environments and can experience the different cultures in, in different places. But uh, it's really individual. It's really individualistic. And I mean, we've had people as young as 19 that have applied who have had a wealth of experience around the world and um, they don't normally move on, but some have. So I hope that answers your question. Oh yeah, definitely. Th thank you very much. That's a very good response. And that's what I, I kind of assumed um, because it is um, that life uh, experience is truly an important part of um, knowing for sure what you want to do and, and, uh, and the seriousness of this particular career too. So there's another uh, question from the office here. Most of the, of the police officers that I know are, are have been enrolled in university at the time when they, uh, they joined the force and, and, and got uh, accepted. Uh, does it help to continue your education afterwards, after high school, while you're uh, uh, waiting to get into the police academy? Or what are things that, that you would recommend to help put the uh, odds in your favor of being accepted, I guess, is what a young person would want to know? Yeah, you know what, we have had uh, people who have applied who have master's degrees in economics, and we've had people who have come in with a, uh, with a GED, um, and everything else in between. So if I value education, and so does the service, because education really shows uh, that commitment to learn, one of those competencies, those core competencies that have been identified by our service. Um, but it doesn't have to be at the university level, it, it, it can be at a trade school. Uh, we have lot. We have plenty of, of police officers who worked in the trades for years, uh, got the Red Seal tickets at, at SAS Poly or at State or May, and have decided that a career to what they wanted. And in all honesty, it's a great benefit for us because not well for not only for us but also for the candidate and the fact that uh, we have twelve-hour shift schedules in patrol, which means that you really only work about half the year. Is over 12 hour shifts and you work long hours, but then you get long days off. We have plenty of people who go on to start second businesses, and um, whether they just want to do some plumbing or be an elect or electrician or um, even doing things like snow removal and, and um, working in golf courses and doing all sorts of things. And so, really, it's it really comes down to the individual. And I was lucky enough that. When I went to university, back 20 years ago, university was a real big push for police officers. But now we really look at the individual. We really look at their life experience, um, their maturity, um, not only their, their, their financial maturity too, how they've been able to handle money and, and are, you know, are they careless with their life decisions. And so whether you come into this as a plumber or whether you come into this as a university grad, really it just comes to how you can sell yourself, how confident you are and how mature you are for your age and your experience. Do you find your workforce, um, to, I guess, how, how do I put this, like aging, uh, that you're looking to, to build uh, your, your workforce with younger recruits? Um, what's is, the opportunity? Yeah, what's the opportunity, I guess, right now? Uh, and how many recruits would you hire, say, in a year? Well, it really, it really depends. And uh, we're kind of at the whim of, of attrition, right? It really comes down to how many retirees we have. Um, we're really hoping that the service can grow and it really, but it really depends on um, the direction from city council. And that's really where we get uh, our, um, where we get our strength and authorized strength from. So if we have a year where there's a lot of retirees and over the next five years, there will be some, there will be quite a few. So it's, we're really hoping that we can get some numbers up in the next little while to increase our ratio of police officers to population. That's a question I can't answer. And unfortunately that's kind of above my pay grade. That's, that's where the chief and the deputy chief really try to negotiate with our city council. And we're lucky because we have a really great relationship with our city council. And um, 
and, and even with our community as well. So the community, I mean, according to the latest Angus Reid poll that was taken, Regina has some of the highest support from its population in the country. And it, it's a real credit to them, to the men and women that serve on the, in the, not only the sworn, but the, the civilian side uh, of that relationship that we have with our community. So um, long story short, it really depends on what the mayor and, and, the, and the board of police commissioners want and, and, and what they they see and our executive really pushes hard for um, for more recruitment and we're really hoping that this service grows and as the city grows then so should the the service and we're really hoping that that we force some growth over the next certainly the next uh, five years how many police officers would you have right now um, part of the Regina police services approximately is uh, about 405 just well give and take here and there but we're sit around that 400 that's the safest bet. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then in addition to that, like we do have uh, like about 200 sworn civilian, uh, uh, 200 civilian employees as well. So the, the students that take the 20 week course at the U of R, uh, that's kind of that particular program could take them anywhere in the province, say in any of the city police uh, forces that are there. Not really. Really, um, what did when you first when you, before going to the Saskatchewan Police College, you are hired by an agency. Oh, okay. whether, yeah. Okay. Whether it's whether it's Saskatoon or Regina, you get hired by them by us, and then we endorse that that candidate to go to the Saskatchewan Police College. Oh, I get it. Honestly, oh, yeah. Thank okay. you. That's good to know. Yeah, that was good to know. I wasn't sure if it was like the RCMP type thing where you do your training and then you get. Uh, station somewhere, but yours is just kind of the opposite where you have to be almost kind of employed first or guaranteed a job. Yeah. You get yeah. yeah. And it, of course it's all conditional, right? Because if they, if, if a candidate uh, is unsuccessful at the police college or they, they reach a roadblock that they just can't get over, whether it maybe it's firearms or maybe it's their fitness or something like that, then they can, what, what can happen is, is they will be dismissed from the Saskatchewan Police College and then sent back to their respective agency. And then the agency determines whether they provide remedial help or whether that person will just be terminated. Awesome. Yeah. What an awesome presentation. This was, uh, you know, I thought I had a lot of these, um, <laughs> a lot of this knowledge, but there was some new things that I didn't even under or realize. So that's great. Yeah. In terms of the future with, with Regina, it's uh, um, Regina is, is a very challenging place to work. We, uh, we have such a wide, um, uh, diverse community that it's it's it can be challenging. And certainly now, I'm I'm sure you can see from the news that uh, things like methamphetamines and and guns and stuff like that are really really changing the dynamic in Regina. And it's making, uh, it's making it a little more dangerous to be a police officer in Regina, but still at the same time, it's making it very, it's very exciting because in, in a place like Regina, you'll learn more in five years than you would in a place like Calgary in 10. So, and it's such a, 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 sm a smaller intimate agency that it really allows for a lot of training too. Like we really, uh, the, the police service really values training and, and uh, there's lots of opportunities to do training at the police college once you are hired, and that's the another uh, branch that the Saskatchewan Police College is responsible for. So once you are hired, there's plenty of other courses that you can start taking, like whether it be a, you want to be a firearms instructor or you, if you want to become and work in the drug unit, that they'll provide some of those basic building blocks for you. And then if you get into the real specialized things like our forensic ident unit, for example, in the forensics, then you go to uh, what's called the Canadian, the Canadian Police College in Ottawa or in, uh, in BC where you're given extensive, highly technical training, um, like the IDENT course, for example, I believe is uh, three months long. So uh, in, order for to you, in order for you to work in forensics, uh, you need to uh, go to Ottawa for three months. Wow, awesome. Yeah, I think, um, I think we're probably good. This was an awesome presentation. I, I, just like to take this opportunity to thank you, Sergeant Colin, for this very informative presentation to help students in their quest to make better choices about their future employment opportunities. Um, we're also going to extend the invitation to any student that has any other questions. They can definitely contact us at RDIEC. We can definitely get them in contact with you, um, as you said, through your um, through HR department. 
at the Regina Police Force. And um, on that, I think we'll we'll uh, end this presentation. Thank you so much. And don't forget, follow all of my uh, social media stuff. We're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So if you're even if you just have the smallest little bit of interest and you want to see what's happening, follow all those. Uh, whatever um, social media help that you enjoy. I mean, we're not on TikTok yet. I'm not much of a dancer, so um, <laughs> we'll have to work on that. And, and, but uh, thank you very much for having me. It's, it's always a pleasure. This is the second year I'm going to do this now, and uh, I hope I was able to help out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.